axes, axes, and more axes. Today we are diving into the most powerful and iconic axes from Middle Earth. Weapons can play a crucial role in the characters and the world of Middle-earth. Whether it's a sword or bow like we've covered before, or potentially spear and axes that we are yet to do, these weapons often symbolise the characters themselves. In our last videos in this series we have explored the powerful swords and bows, and today we're turning our attention to the mighty axes. From the iconic axe of Gimli to the legendary Dramble Leg of Tuor, we'll explore their epic stories and the feats that made them legendary. So, let's get into it and discover the most powerful axes in all of Middle Earth. And my axe. This iconic line from Gimli Son of Gloin introduces one of the most well-known axes in Middle Earth. While Tolkien's writings provide little description of Gimli's specific axe, it's significant and the character who wields it are legendary. Gimli the dwarf alone wore openly a short shirt of steel rings, for dwarves made light of burdens, and in his belt was a broad bladed axe. Gimli's axe is most notable for its use throughout the War of the Ring, where he demonstrated immense skill and bravery. Despite the lack of detailed descriptions in the books, the movies help visualise his prowess with this weapon. Gimli uses his axe in numerous battles, including of course the Mines of Moria, Helm's Deep and the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, showcasing his valour and strength as a warrior. A fun fact about the movies is that some fans speculate that Gimli finds the legendary axe of Durin in Moria as he leaves with a different one that he arrived with. It is said to be one that he picks up in Balin's tomb, who himself was rumoured to have found Durin's axe during his time there. However, there is no concrete evidence to this theory. In the films, Gimli is seen with multiple axes, highlighting the variety and craftsmanship of dwarven weaponry. His primary axe, used in most battles, is complemented by throwing axes, which he uses with deadly precision. This variety underscores the versatility and combat skills of dwarves, particularly in close combat. Gimli's axe isn't just a tool for battle though, it really does symbolise his heritage and the strength of the dwarves of Erebor. His skill with the axe earns him great respect among his companions, including Legolas, with whom he develops that close friendship despite the historical enmity between their races. This bond of course symbolised in part by their friendly competition in battle, showcases the unity and cooperation that are essential themes in Tolkien's work. Although not named like some of the other legendary weapons, Gimli's axe remains one of the most iconic weapons in Middle Earth due to the character's heroic deeds and the crucial role he plays in the Fellowship of the Ring. Its legacy is a testament to the bravery, skill and resilience of the dwarves in their fight against the forces of darkness. Next, we're going to head back to the First Age to meet Tuor and his mighty axe, Dramboleg. This axe, meaning Thuddersharp, was known for its incredible power, both smiting like a club and cleaving like a sword. Tuor, son of Huor and father of Eärendil, wielded Dramboleg and accomplished some of the greatest feats in the history of Middle-earth with it. Tuor used Dramboleg during the fall of Gondolin, one of the most significant and tragic events of the First Age. In this battle, Tuor fought valiantly using his mighty axe to slay three Balrogs, including their lord and orc chieftain, Othrod. These achievements highlight not only Tuor's exceptional prowess as a warrior, but also the immense power of Dramboleg. Dramboleg received its name because it could both smite with the force of a club and cleave like a sword, like I said. This unique quality made it a formidable weapon in Tuor's hands, allowing him to deal devastating blows to his enemies. The axe was described as being exceptionally large and heavy, yet Tuor wielded it with great skill and strength, reflecting his status as one of the tallest and mightiest of the Adain. After the fall of Gondolin, Tuor escaped with his wife Idril and their son Eärendil. Dramboleg was passed down through Tuor's descendants, eventually making its way to Numenor. There, it became an heirloom of the Numenorean kings, symbolising his legacy and his heroic deeds. Unfortunately, like many other great relics, Dramboleg was lost during the downfall of Numenor, when the island kingdom was destroyed and sank beneath the waves. The legacy of Dramboleg, however, endures in the tales and songs of Middle-earth. Tuor's heroism and the might of his axe are remembered as symbols of resistance against Morgoth and the enduring spirit of the Free Peoples. Dramboleg's story, though ultimately tragic, is one of the many examples of bravery and determination that define Tolkien's epic mythology. 
the tale of Drambleleg and Tuor is really a testament to the power of courage of those who stand against darkness, making this axe one of the most iconic and powerful weapons in all of Middle-earth. If we continue in the First Age, we must now turn our attention to Azagal, the Lord of Belagost, and his mighty axe. Though this axe was never given a specific name, its legendary use in battle cements its place among the most powerful axes in Middle-earth. Azagal's most notable feat with his axe occurred during the Nuneath Anodiad, or the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. In this brutal and devastating battle, the combined forces of elves, men and dwarves fought against the overwhelming might of Morgoth's armies. Azagal and his dwarves played a crucial role in this conflict, showcasing the unmatched craftsmanship and battle prowess of the dwarves of Belagost. During the battle, Morgoth unleashed his most fearsome weapon, the dragon, Glaurung. The dwarves led by Azagal bravely confronted the dragon, and thanks to their superior armour and weaponry crafted by the skilled smiths of Belagost, the dwarves managed to withstand Glaurung's fiery breath and powerful strikes. Azagal himself engaged the dragon in direct combat, using his axe to deal significant wounds to the beast. Despite their valiant efforts, the dwarves did suffer heavy losses, and Azagal was mortally wounded by Glaurung. In his final moments, Azagal summoned his remaining strength and struck a powerful blow with his axe, driving the dragon away. This act of heroism allowed the sons of Feanor and other allied forces to retreat and live to fight another day. The dwarves of Belagost then carried Azagal's body from the battlefield, singing in his honour while no one dared to touch them. Though the axe of Azagal was never named, its significance in the battle against Glaurung and its role in the Neath Anodiad are undeniable. Azagal's courage and his powerful axe left a lasting legacy, remembered by both dwarves and their allies. It just shows his heroic stand against Glaurung and his sacrifice for his allies are legendary, and this means his legacy and his axes now go hand in hand. Moving back to the Third Age now, we come to Dane Ironfoot, son of Nain, renowned for wielding a red axe. Dane Ironfoot is celebrated for his bravery and skill in battle, and his red axe became legendary through many deeds. One of Dane's most famous feats occurred outside the gates of Moria during the War of the Dwarves and Orcs. This conflict culminated in the Battle of Azanul Bazaar, fought beneath the East Gate of Moria. In this battle, Dane, though still considered young by Dwarven standards, proved his mettle and skill with his axe. Up the steps after him leaped a dwarf with a red axe. It was Dane Ironfoot, Nain's son. Right before the doors he caught Azog, and there he slew him and hewed off his head. That was held a great feat, for Dane was only a stripling in the reckoning of the dwarves. Dane's act of slaying Azog the Orc Chieftain was a pivotal moment in the battle and is remembered as one of the greatest feats of the War of the Dwarves and Orcs. Azog's death was a significant victory for the dwarves, and Dane's bravery and skill with his red axe played a crucial role in achieving this triumph. Dane's Red Axe continued to serve him well throughout his life. He later became King of Durin's Folk and ruled Erebor after the death of Thorin Oakenshield. Dane led his people with wisdom and strength, and his prowess in battle was further demonstrated during the Battle of Five Armies and later during the War of the Ring as well. As a trusted ally of the Free Peoples of Middle-earth, Dane's leadership and his Red Axe were instrumental in the defence of the North against Sauron's forces. Though, again, a dwarven axe here with no specific name, Dane's red axe is remembered for the significant role it played in the hands of a mighty warrior and king. Its legacy is intertwined with Dane Ironfoot's own, a symbol of the strength, bravery and resilience of the dwarves. The tale of Dane Ironfoot and his red axe serves as an inspiring reminder of the valour and determination that define the dwarves of Middle-earth. Dane's deeds and his iconic weapon are celebrated in the annals of Middle-earth's history, making his red axe one of the most legendary weapons of the Third Age. Another legendary axe from the histories of Middle-earth is an ancient and revered heirloom of the Dwarves, originally wielded by Durin the Deathless. Durin the Deathless was the first of the Seven Fathers of the Dwarves and the founder of khazad later known as Moria. His exceptionally long life and immense influence earned him a legendary status among the dwarves, and his axe became a symbol of their legacy. Durin's axe was a powerful weapon, crafted with the unmatched skill and craftsmanship of the dwarven smiths. It was used by Durin in many battles, as he established and defended the great dwarven kingdom of khazad This axe represented the strength and resilience of the dwarves, embodying their spirit and their skill in both crafting and combat. When khazad was deserted in the year 1981 of the Third Age due to the awakening of the Balrog, Durin's axe was left behind. 
The great heirloom remained lost for many years, until it was rediscovered by Barling's expedition in 2989 of the Third Age. Or at least so it was rumoured. Barling, being the same one from the company of Thorin Oakenshield in The Hobbit, led a group back to Moria in an attempt to reclaim it and resettle in this ancient dwarven kingdom. The supposed rediscovery of Durin's axe by Barling's expedition was a significant event, symbolising a potential resurgence of dwarven glory in Khazad Doom. Unfortunately, Barling's colony did not last, and they were overrun by orcs and the Balrog in 2994, leading to the loss of Durin's axe once again. Though the ultimate fate of this axe remains unknown, its legacy as a symbol of dwarven heritage and resilience does still endure. The tales of Durin the Deathless and his mighty axe will continue to inspire the dwarves for as long as they remained in Middle-earth. Now let's step back to the First Age once again, where we have the axe wielded by Hurin Thalion, known as the mightiest warrior of men. Hurin, the Lord of Dolomin, is renowned for his incredible strength, bravery, and the unwavering defiance against Morgoth. His axe played a pivotal role in his most legendary feats. One of the most iconic moments involving Hurin and his axe occurred during the Neneath Anodiad or the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. In this brutal and fateful battle, Hurin and his brother Huor fought valiantly to protect the retreat of Turgon, King of Gondolin, ensuring that the hidden city's location remained a secret. As the battle reached its climax, Hurin stood alone, wielding his mighty axe against the overwhelming forces of Morgoth. Despite being vastly outnumbered, he continued to fight with unmatched ferocity. Each time he struck down an enemy, he cried out, Alre, en Tuluva, which means, day shall come again. This phrase, repeated 70 times, symbolised his unbreakable spirit and the hope for a future free from darkness. Hurin's stand at the Battle of Unnumbered Tears is one of the most heroic and tragic moments in Tolkien's Legendarium. Though he was eventually captured by Morgoth's forces, his defiance and courage became legendary. Morgoth, in his wrath, cursed Hurin and his family, leading to the tragic tales of his children Turin Taramba and Nye Nolniniao. The axe of Hurin, though not specifically named, is remembered for its role in his legendary stand. The image of Hurin, surrounded by the bodies of his foes, wielding his axe with unwavering determination, is a powerful symbol of resistance and hope. The tale of Hurin and his axe is one of the many examples of the heroism and tragedy that define the history of Middle-earth. His bravery and the power of his weapon are celebrated in songs and stories of the Free Peoples, making his axe one of the most iconic in Tolkien's works. Our final specific entry is wielded now by a Servant of Darkness, Gothmog, the Lord of Balrogs and High Captain of Angband. Gothmog was a corrupted Maia turned Balrog and one of the chief lieutenants of Morgoth during the First Age. His Black Axe was a weapon of terror and destruction, used in some of the most significant battles of the early history of Middle-earth. Gothmog's axe was first made infamous in the Dagol Nuin Giliath, or the Battle Under Stars, where he mortally wounded Feanor, the High King of the Nordal. Feanor had pursued the forces of Morgoth into Middle-earth after the theft of the Silmarils, and his confrontation with Gothmog was a pivotal moment in this early conflict. Gothmog also wielded his axe during the Neneath Anodiad, where he led the forces of Morgoth to a devastating victory over the elves and their allies. In this battle, he faced and killed Fingon, the High King of the Noldor, adding to his fearsome reputation. But perhaps the most famous use of Gothmog's axe was during the fall of Gondolin. As the leader of Morgoth's assault on the Hidden City, Gothmog used his black axe to great effect, causing widespread destruction and terror among the defenders. His presence on the battlefield was a significant factor in the city's eventual downfall. The Black Axe of Gothmog symbolises the immense power and malice of the forces of darkness in Middle-earth. It was a weapon that brought fear and death wherever it was wielded, and its legacy is one of sorrow and loss for the Free Peoples. Though ultimately defeated in the fall of Gondolin by Ecthelion of the Fountain, who sacrificed his own life to slay the Balrog Lord, Gothmog's legacy and the terror of his axe lived on. His story is a reminder of the ever-present threat of darkness and the great sacrifices made to resist it. And so that's where we will end that list of what we consider some of the most powerful and iconic axes throughout the history of Middle-earth. However, axes weren't just used by heroes. In fact, they were the chief weapons of the vast majority of the dwarven race throughout their times. Dwarves often carried multiple axes as backup weapons. After all, if your axe gets embedded in something with a nervous system, you might just need a second one. Axes have a deep-rooted significance in dwarven culture, 
They are not only tools of war, but also essential for their daily life activity, such as mining and crafting. Dwarves have a natural affinity for these weapons due to their sturdy builds. The craftsmanship of the dwarven axes is unmatched as well, making them highly effective in battle and as treasured heirlooms. It wasn't just the dwarves though who did favour axes. The Numenorians, although not typical for battle, were also skilled with these weapons, using them primarily for deforestation to build their mighty ships. The ability to clear vast forests allowed them to construct that powerful navy that they became famous for, which played a crucial role in their dominance over the seas. So, while Numenorians may not have used axes directly in combat often, their proficiency with these tools contributed significantly to their military strength and strategic capabilities. If we look at the forces of darkness as well, they also made extensive use of axes. Balrogs, like Gothmog, wielded massive, terrifying axes that brought destruction and fear to their enemies. Orcs often chose axes as their weapon of choice due to their brutal efficiency and ease of use. These axes, though crude compared to dwarven craftsmanship, were deadly in the hands of the relentless orcs' hordes. In The Lord of the Rings, the Easterlings are depicted wielding great axes during the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. These axes symbolise their strength and ferocity, making them formidable opponents in battle. The Easterlings, known for their aggressive and warlike nature, found axes to be perfect tools for their brutal combat style. As well as this, axes in Middle-earth were also used for ceremonial purposes as symbols of power. For instance, the Axe of Durin was a revered heirloom among the Dwarves, representing the greatness of their lineage. Such axes were often passed down through generations, carrying with them the histories and honours of their wielders. Overall, axes played a versatile role in Middle-earth. They were tools of war, instruments of daily life, and symbols of heritage and power. Nearly all races, from Dwarves to Numenorians to the Dark Forces of Mordor, had those who favoured these great melee weapons, and who can blame them? And so there we have it, a look into some of the most powerful and iconic axes throughout the histories of Middle-earth. From the legendary Drambleleg of Tuor to the mighty Red Axe of Dane Ironfoot, these weapons have left their mark on the epic tales of Tolkien's world. Weapons have such a strong presence throughout Tolkien's writings, and they are truly deserving of deeper dives. Axes weren't just used by heroes, they were the chief weapons of the vast majority of the Dwarven race throughout their history. These powerful tools symbolise the resilience, craftsmanship and warrior spirit of this race. But it's not just the Dwarves who favoured them. Numenorians, Orcs, Balrogs, Easterlings also wielded axes for various purposes, from building mighty ships to striking fear into their enemies. Axes, with their brutal efficiency and symbolic power, played versatile roles in Middle-earth. They were used in legendary battles, passed down as heirlooms and employed in everyday tasks. These weapons truly represent the strength and spirit of those who wielded them, whether that was for good or for evil. And I would also like to take a moment at the end of this video today to give you a quick update on The Guard, the short film that we are creating. Everything is going amazing, we have just shot block 2 and the rest of it should hopefully be shot soon too. As always, it is all the money from our Patreon that is funding this. In essence, it is a no budget production if you consider the large scale of film, but every pound that you give is a massive help to create an incredible story. I'm putting a couple of shots on screen now and some behind the scenes clips to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. So if you would like to help support it a little bit more to help push us over the line, then please check out our Patreon. Every little bit really helps. And with that now it is time for my question of the day which is, if you could own any of these axes which would you choose? The legendary Lost Axe of Durin, the axe that took down the Balrog's Drambleleg, or a completely different one? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section down below. And now it is time to give a massive thank you to our patrons who continue to support the channel, you are all amazing. And if you have reached the very end of this video with me today, and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so, it would massively help us out, and why not drop a like on the video as well. And with that, all I can say is, thank you for spending just some of your time with me today, and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.